Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to solve two very, very simple problems related to molecular uh, movements and the laws which we have learned by now about molecular movements. Um, now, this lecture is basically a continuation of the course Physics for Teens, which is presented on uh, website unizor.com. I do suggest you to go to this website to listen to this and any other lecture because it's a course uh, which which has its own logical dependencies, etc. So if you found it on YouTube, for instance, or anywhere uh, anywhere else, I would rather suggest you to go to unizor.com for the same thing because the same lecture is actually accompanied by a uh, very detailed uh, explanation as a textual uh, in a textual format, like, like a textbook, basically. Um, so you can listen to the lecture, you can read the text. Um, and uh, the site is free, by the way. There is no uh, strings attached, no advertisement. Uh, you don't even have to sign on if you, want, if you don't want to. So basically, that's what I recommend. In addition to this course, Physics 14, the site contains Math 14, um, which is actually a prerequisite for the physics, because there is no physics without math, as you understand. Okay, so these couple of simple problems um, are about molecular movement and the formulas which we have learned. Um, the only thing is, I, I, I really hate to present you the formula as a solution, basically, because both problems actually are solved in like one algebraic um, operation. Um, so I would like actually to talk about the formula which I'm going to use um, because uh, any repetition I think of this particular um, logical way of derivation of this formula is, is just useful from pedagogical uh, uh, standpoint. Now obviously everything is explained before in the lecture which is um, dedicated to kinetics of ideal gas so I will just very briefly repeat this in uh, relationship to the problem uh, at hand. So the problem is uh, how much kinetic energy are in all the molecules in the room? Well obviously for this we need certain information about the room, about the pressure, etc. So um, the room size is 4 by 4 by 3 meters and we're talking about normal atmospheric pressure of 100,000 pascals, which is newtons by square meters. This is the normal atmospheric pressure, um, which is like 760 millimeters of uh, um, hydrogen or 30 um, pounds per square inch, something like this. I don't remember actually. Normal atmospheric pressure, whatever it is, that's what it is. And I actually round it up, obviously. It's not exactly 100,000. So, we have the pressure of the air. Well, we assume that the air is ideal gas. And we have the size of the room. So, the question is, how much kinetic energy are in this room? Okay. Now, before applying a formula, I I'll just as I was explaining, I, I, would, I would like to derive it again, so to speak, but briefly, not, as, uh, not in as many details as in the corresponding lecture, which is dedicated to this. Uh, I think the lecture is called uh, Kinetics of Ideal Gas. But very, <coughs> very briefly, excuse me. So, very briefly is a relationship between um, pressure, the volume, and kinetic energy. Because that's all I need. I need this formula which relates kinetic energy, pressure, and volume. I can write it down right now because it was already written in that particular um, text. However, I think it's just good if I will discuss it again. So let's talk about reservoir of cubical form with the side equals to L. And let's talk about um, one molecule of gas which is going back and forth between two opposite walls, perpendicularly to these walls, and elastically reflected um, from each wall. So it goes like this all the time. 
So now, let's think about what kind of a pressure this particular one molecule um, exerts onto onto the wall. Well, let's think about the following. The molecule has a certain um, impulse, which is m times speed, right? Now, if if you act during certain time with certain force onto object, it changes this um, uh, momentum of uh, uh, of the movement, right? So if you subtract from the ending um, uh, moment, you subtract the beginning moment, that actually is an impulse of the f force which is uh, acting on this particular mo molecule during the time tau. The force is F. Now, well, this obviously is a vector uh, equation. Now, what's important in this particular case is the force is not constant during this change. The force actually is equal to zero while the molecule is traveling from one end to another and then at the moment of hitting the wall during a very small interval of time the force actually is acting as elastic force which reflects the uh, molecule uh, back to this direction and uh, we are assuming this is a 100% elastic uh, reflection which means that these two speeds are um, opposite in direction but the same in um, absolute value so um, we are not therefore talking about one particular force which is acting during this time we're talking about some average force which acts during this time and what is the time well the time is let's uh, let's talk about the time from the um, uh, when the when the molecule is at uh, opposite wall then it goes to this wall reflects and goes back because this is basically a periodicity of this movement because then everything starts from the beginning so during this period of time tau um, our force is changing from zero to something and then to zero again but we can talk about the average force which is um, uh, exerted during this time and that would be the difference between two uh, momentums right now uh, since these two are the same of absolute value and uh, opposite in direction, let's just talk about V as the absolute value. So if I will subtract this from this, I will have basically 2M times V, right? Because this is minus this, right? In, up, in, in, in vector uh, algebra. Now, what is equal to? It's equal to average force. I'll just use it without the vectors. And what is the tau? Tau is the time uh, during which we are measuring the whole thing. So it's a period from uh, the position when molecules is on, on that wall and goes this way and back. So the length is L and L back, so it's 2L. And the time therefore is 2L divided by the same absolute speed V, right? So from this we do this and we do this equals to f times l right v goes here now um, if you divide it by two that would be a kinetic energy of the molecule right so the kinetic energy of the molecule equals to this now uh, force and pressure are related very easily to each other because this is basically the whole side of the uh, of the reservoir and um, this force actually is acting on the whole reservoir in this particular case although it's one molecule but it's still acting on the whole uh, on the whole wall so we can always say that considering the pressure is actually the force divided by um, uh, divided by area so instead of the force we can put pressure times l squared which is uh, area times l divided by 2 which is p times 
volume L square and L is L cube, L cube is a volume divided by uh, 2. So this is a very important equation for one particular molecule. Now, if I have lots of molecules which are flying parallel to each other, then this actually would be uh, the kinetic energy uh, of, of the entire set of molecules which are actually acting uh, in the same direction. And if uh, I consider that the molecules are not flying in the same direction but in all three dimensions, which is, um, which is actually which, act, which, which is actually means that I have to divide it by 3. So in this particular case, it's 2 uh, kinetic energy uh, is equal to, oops, it's already 2, P times V. Now, if I will, dis if I will consider uh, all the molecules which are flying in all the three dimensions, then I will have to basically divide it by three. So this is how I briefly um, derive the formula which I'm which I'm going to use in this particular case. All right. So if this is true, then my problem is actually very easy because I have everything I need. All I need to do is to find out kinetic energy. And it's equal to 3 second P times V. Now I know the P, that's the pressure, I know the volume. So all I have to do is basically substitute all these values into this formula. And now I, again, I, I could have just presented this formula which is borrowed from the previous lecture I just wanted to talk about where exactly this formula comes from because it's very, very important to understand that it's not the formula which you have to remember, it's the logic behind it which I would like you to be comfortable with. So this is how we calculate this particular value. And it happens to be, I calculated it's 7,200,000 joules. So this is my total energy, kinetic energy, of all the molecules in this average size, average size room under normal pressure. Now, is it a lot? Well, let's consider the second half of this problem. Second half of this problem is, consider you have an average car which weighs, which weighs let's say, 2,000 kilograms. Now, what should be the speed of this car for this car to have this uh, kinetic energy? So, you have mass of the car, square of the speed divided by 2, that's kinetic energy, and it's equal to this 7 to 100,000 joules. And instead of M, I will put 2,000 kilograms. What is the V? What is the speed? Well, my calculations show that the V is supposed to be 306 kilometers per hour, which is about 190 miles per hour. That's fast. 190 miles an hour, 300 something kilometers per hour. That's really fast. So, if the car has this speed, then its kinetic energy is equal to kinetic energy of all the molecules in this room. Well, not in this particular room. In a room of this size, under normal atmospheric pressure. So, it's pretty much a lot. I mean, it's really a very, very high number. Alright, so that's it for my first problem. Now, my second problem is related to a fundamental um, equation of the kinetic theory of the ideal gas and I will put this equation here P times V divided by T equals 
uh, constant of Boltzmann number number of molecules which is constant for a specific amount of gas specific number of molecules this is the Boltzmann, Boltzmann's constant um, and this is pressure times volume divided by temperature in Kelvin by the way temperature is always in absolute uh, degrees of Kelvin scale so we have this formula now it's very important actually to remember it. I mean this is something which even I remember it and I hate to remember any kind of a formulas now based on this formula my problem is how many molecules of gas are in the room again under normal uh, conditions which have been described before so I have the pressure I have the volume uh, and the temperature let's assume is again uh, normal temperature like 20 degrees Celsius which is like 293 degree Kelvin and pressure is so this is the temperature pressure is 100,000 Newton square meter and the volume is equal to 4 times 4 times 4 uh, not, not 4 times 4 times 3 I think I put uh, which is what 48 cubical meters well if you substitute it and you put the Boltzmann's constant whatever the constant is and in my lecture I actually put this value I will have that number of molecules n which is equal to p times b divided by t times constant Boltzmann constant it, it's equal to 0 0.12 ten, 10 times 10 in the 28th degree it's a huge number I mean 10 to the 28th power it's really a lot so we have a lot of molecules <laughs> I mean that's basically all I wanted to, 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 to present here and again it's just a direct uh, uh, derivation from from the main formula of the kinetic uh, theory of gases um, and again let me just tell you that this is something which is probably good to remember this type of a formula um, now from my school years I remember just this one PV divided by T is constant then a little later uh, I have added that this constant is actually dependent on the number of molecules yes it is constant but obviously if you change the number of molecules it will be a different value but for, an, for a specific number of molecules pressure volume and temperature are very much related and in the exams for this particular um, part of the course uh, molecular uh, movements I actually am trying to, to present different um, problems based on different conditions for instance temperature is the same we are changing volume how the pressure will change or pressure is the same uh, we are changing volume how the temperature is changed etc so all these problems are in the exams for this particular uh, topic and I do recommend you to to take this exam just to check yourself how you you know how you master this okay so that that's it for today um, I do recommend you to go and read the text for these particular uh, uh, problems because the text actually has a solution and I also recommend you to take exam exam is really a good thing just to check yourself it's uh, usually I have like six different problems with multiple choices six different answers for each problem so it's, it's, a, it's a good exercise which I definitely recommend you to take that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.